The experiment you just concluded showed you how different colors of light mix together to form other colors using three primary colors, red, blue and green. How does this work? What is the point of knowing this? Why is this important? Are there examples around us that show or use this principle? These questions and more shall be answered in the guide that follows. Many electronic screens can display a vast range of colors. How does it do this? Does each pixel consist of these colored, tiny, light bulb-like objects? Is there one big object that can just emit any frequency of light on command? LCD and LED television screens, which are the new and sleek sets, work on the principle of color addition. Color addition is just jargon for mixing colors of light. Here are some variations that you can try. The visualization of the mixing cannot be seen very clearly with the above setup. A useful variation that would help this is as follows. A circular hole of around 1.5 centimeters of radius can be cut out in a black chart paper or cardboard and the light from the tri-LED setup can be shown through it. This defines the areas each color is seen in and the secondary colors can be seen clearly. Make different shapes of holes and have fun. Make pairs of LED lights, red plus green, red plus blue, and green plus blue. Shine the light through a circular hole and observe the secondary colors formed. Shine two pairs at different angles such that two secondary colors mix. Observe the colors formed now. You can also shine each pair on a white wall, place an object between them and play with the shadows formed. Take different colored sheets of paper and shine the light from the tri-colored LED setup on them. Observe how each of the primary and secondary colors look on each colored paper. They may look the same and some may have changed color. Why do you think this happens? Is this still color addition or is it color subtraction? Here are some scientific and historical background. The first color photograph. Do you know how the first color photograph was taken and by whom? It was taken by Thomas Sutton working with James Maxwell in 1861. It was a photograph of a tartan ribbon, that is a multicolored striped ribbon. But they had cameras that could only take photographs in black and white. So how did they do this? They took three photographs while using red, green and blue filters. Then they used three projectors with the same filters to project all three photographs on each other. The result was the image that you see now. This works on the basic principle of color addition, where colors of light mix to form other colors of light. Maxwell used this to demonstrate Young's trichromatic vision theory during a lecture at the Royal Institution of Great Britain on May 17, 1861. Here are several scientific terms. Wave, a disturbance that transfers energy through matter or space. It is represented by plotting the displacement of the disturbance over time. The second, crests, the highest peaks in the wave graph. The third, troughs, the lowest points in the valleys of the graph. The fourth, amplitude, the distance between the crests or troughs to the middle. The fifth, wavelength, the distance between crests, one full cycle. The sixth, frequency, the number of cycles passing through a given unit of time. The seventh, light wave. It is an electromagnetic wave with perpendicular electric and magnetic components. Here are some theory prerequisites. To understand this phenomenon, we must understand what the color of light means and how our eyes work. So, what is light and color? You may have heard of the fact that light is a wave. It has an amplitude which determines how bright the color is seen. 
It has a wavelength and a frequency, both of which correspond to what color the light is. White light is often represented as a mixture of seven colors that range from high frequency violet to a low frequency red with orange, yellow, green, blue and indigo between them. How do our eyes see anything in the first place? The human eye is a complicated organ that allows us to see the world. It has an opening called the pupil through which light enters. This light goes through the lens which focuses it on a layer called the retina. The retina has different sets of cells that generate impulses that are sent to the brain which forms the image. Here are some concepts that you should be familiar with. The young Helmholtz's theory of trichromatic vision. This theory was formulated by Thomas Young and further developed by Hermann von Helmholtz, both in the 19th century. Young claimed that there are three portions in the filament of the nerves in our eye, each of which could perceive one of the principal colors of light. Helmholtz developed this idea by classifying the photoreceptors called cone cells into red, which are long preferring, green, which are medium preferring, and violet, which are short preferring, based on the wavelengths of light they respond to. So when red light falls on the retina, the red cones send signals to the brain and we can see red. But when yellow light falls on our retina, the red and green cones send signals to the brain and we see yellow. This also happens when a mixture of green and red light falls on the retina. This is how we see different colors as mixtures of others. So how do photoreceptor cells work? Our retinas contain two types of photoreceptors, cones and rods. There are around 7 million cones and 75 to 150 million rods in one human eye. What do these do and why are there so many? Cone cells help us see color in well-lit conditions. As Helmholtz discovered, they are of three types and whenever the particular frequency of light falls on the cones, only the particular cones generate impulses and we see that color. Have you ever wondered why you can't distinctly make out colors when there's very little light around? Rods are the cells that are sensitive at low light conditions. They cannot distinguish between colors, but focus on the intensity of the incoming light. Now, you're probably thinking why they work differently. Rods and cones are both connected to two main nerve cells that generate the nerve impulse that travels to the brain. Rods and cones have similar structures, with a cell body, a synaptic terminal that connects to the nerves and multiple discs with pigments. These discs contain a photosensitive protein, rhodopsin in rods, and photopsin. There are three types, one for each color, in cones. Under dark conditions, there is regular flow of sodium ions inside these cells, which cause the release of neurotransmitters from the cell. When light falls on the discs, they cause a series of reactions that stop the flow of sodium ions into the cell and in turn stop the neurotransmitters from being released. This causes an impulse to be sent from the nerve cells it is connected to. Here are some applications. We have taken this complex simplicity of the human eye to make electronic screens that need only three types of colors in its basic unit to produce the entire spectrum that we see. This basic unit is called a pixel. Most modern television sets are structured as shown in the picture you see now. There is a backlight that emits white light which goes through a liquid crystal layer. Light travels through the liquid crystal layer, goes through the color filters and comes out through the transparent screen. How does it regulate which color is displayed? This is the role of the crystal layer 
which is made of many units, one for each color filter. It can block out light selectively at different intensities to form different colors. So when green is lit, you see green. When the green and blue ones are lit, we see a cyan and so on. Imagine if we had more types of cone cells. Our televisions would have to have much more complex pixels with multiple colors. In closing, now you know about how you see different colors of light and our brain can be tricked into seeing a particular color by mixing an other color. If you're wondering how paints and crayons work differently, be sure to check out the color subtraction activity.